settle this, officer. Can't we settle this out of court and avoid a scandal? Oh, I'll tell it to the sergeant. Oh, Fousey. <laughs> I'd like to see Captain Riley. Nothing doing. What do you mean? There's a light in his office. You can't see him. He's in conference. Come on, what do you make of it? Let's have it. 15 2, 15 4, and 8 or 12. And one for his knobs. Right, 13. Nothing in the crib. Anybody ever tell you that cribbage is a two-handed game? Not when I'm betting a dollar it isn't. There's only one thing worse than a kibitzer, and that's a police reporter. <laughs> How'd you like to make it two bucks? You took the words out of my mouth. OK, it's a bet. Why don't you take them for some? Can't afford to bet. This isn't a bet. It's a present. I'm in hock now for two months' pay. Pretty hard keeping a wife and three kids on a lieutenant's pay. All right, let's get back to the game. Yeah, here's where we take the silver out of Riley's hair and the gold out of his teeth. How'd you like the diamonds out of my badge? Say, that's pretty. One of these days, I'm going to add that to my collection of sorority pins. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Pardon me, gentlemen. I'm looking for the captain. I'm Captain Riley. What's the trouble? Captain, I want you to lock me up. You must lock me up right away. What have you done? Nothing yet, but I'm going to. I'm going to do something terrible. No, no, please, gentlemen. I'm not insane. Well, we can't arrest you for something you haven't done. But you must stop me. You must lock me up. What's your name? I'm Dr. Emil Brandt. It's possible that you're... Sure. I've been trying to place you. You were the alienist in the Conroy case. Remember the piece I wrote about you in the record, Doc? Please. No reporters. Right. Take the air, McKee. Oh, listen, Cap. Outside. Say, that bet's off, huh? Not on your life. I got too good a hand. We'll play it later. Put your cards in your pocket, Frank. OK with me. Where are you going with those? Just protecting my investment. Hey, what's that? See a pin, pick it up. All day long, you'll have good luck. Now, doctor, why do you want me to lock you up? I'm going to commit a murder. A murder? Listen. Listen to me carefully. For many years, I've used my knowledge to cure people of criminal tendencies using hypnotism and mental suggestion. I have a patient who was shell-shocked during the war. This man is a bank official. Lately, he's had a relapse, and he's obsessed by the fear that he'll take some of the bank's money. I've been treating this man the usual way for shell shock mania cases. By hypnotism? And mental suggestion. I put him under a mild hypnosis, and then I tell him over and over again that he must forget the money. Forget the money. Yes, well? What if I were to reverse the treatment? What if I were to tell this man to bring me the money, bring me the money, bring me the money, bring me $100,000? And then what? What if I were to keep this money for myself and murder this man? You'd be buying a one-way ticket to a hanging. No. No, you cannot convict in a murder case unless you can produce at least part of the dead body. Right. And how would you arrange that little matter? You see this instrument? A choke, how we call it. I put my patient to sleep. He's lying there unconscious, helpless. And then I plunge this choker into his heart, like this. There would be no struggle, no outcry. And if I didn't withdraw the drill, there would be no blood. 
Well, Kay, then you got a stiff on your hands. Uh, that's where the surgeon has an advantage. I have a laboratory at my home where I often do dissections. It would be very easy for me to dispose of the body. Sure, but with all that money missing, there'd be a search. Yes, but you would be searching for a live man, not a dead one. That's pretty good, doctor. You figured a swell way of cheating the law. That's why you've got to lock me up. You've got to save me for myself. But we can't lock up a man for thinking a perfect crime. But, Captain, I'm afraid I'm going to do it. I, I can't stop myself. Oh, no, you won't do it now. It's no longer a perfect crime. You told us about it. Sure, you're caught before you begin. But, gentlemen, I have begun. What do you mean? Last night, after I'd hypnotized my patient, I said to him, bring me $100,000 tomorrow night. And gentlemen, tonight at 8.15, he'll come to my house with the money. Captain, you got to save me for myself. I don't want to murder this man. Now, take it easy, doctor, take it easy. Nothing's going to happen to you. And how about your patient? There'll be nobody at the house when he arrives, will there? No, my wife and the servants will be out. Well, what'll he do? You've got to be there to help him. Don't you see? Yes. You're right. Now, look. You go home. Lieutenant Martin will go with you and stay there as long as you like. How's that? Thank you, Captain. Thank you. I'll stay if you want me to, but don't forget I'm off duty at 8.30. Oh, yes. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll be at your house tonight myself at 8.15. Now, don't worry. You're going to be all right. Thank you. Let's go. River Drive, Charlie. Follow that police car, buddy. No, no, you and the other go right ahead. Thank you, Doctor. Have a good time. Yeah, Doctor. You see, Lieutenant, my two servants have gone out. That was part of my plan. My wife is dining out and going to the theater, and my daughter lives at college. Oh, I, I think we'll be more comfortable in my study. Nobody in the house but you, eh? Me and my patient. And a hundred thousand bucks. What a setup. Ah, but I'm not worrying now. Since I've got it off my mind, I feel better. Sure you do. Funny thing, isn't it? I mean to think that I was going to commit a murder with this instrument. I can hardly believe it. Uh, perhaps I could offer you a, a little schnapps, huh? <laughs> well... Sure. <clears throat> it's a cold night, Lieutenant. <clears throat> <laughs> and after all, it isn't such a terrible crime to take a little drink on a cold night, eh, Lieutenant? That's a question for a judge to decide. I'm only a cop. Skull. And you. Pardon me. Oh, Dad? Who's the cop in the car outside? 
Oh, excuse me. Doris, dear, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm E.W.L. Got to be back at the hall by 8.30. My daughter Doris, Detective Martin of the police force. So you finally tracked him down. I knew you'd get him sooner or later. What have you been up to now, Dad? Your father's been down to headquarters in consultation on a case, Miss Brand. Oh. Well, tell me about it. Or, or is it a secret? No, no, no. It, it's no secret. Uh, but uh, we mustn't keep the lieutenant. No, I'll be running along. Oh, must you? I've always wanted to know a sleuth. Well, come down to headquarters with your father someday. It's a date. Good night, Miss Brandt. Good night. Oh, uh, this way is shorter, Lieutenant. Oh. Uh, turn to the left and watch the steps. Good night, Doctor. Good night. Uh, good night and many thanks. That's all. You're not afraid, are you? I don't think so. A little nervous, though. There's nothing to be nervous about. All you have to do is telephone me as soon as you're sure. All right. Dad, what's worrying you? Nothing, my dear, nothing. Been working too hard lately? I keep busy. Now, listen, darling. I've known you too long. You've got something on your mind. <laughs> I hope so. What's the matter? Has Frida bought another fur coat? No, my dear, no. Well, then it's just because she hasn't thought of it. I'm afraid you're prejudiced, Doris. Sometimes I think that if you tried a little harder, you and your stepmother could be good friends. You could never be friends with her. Oh, you never tried. You and your brother both. She you drove always... Jim away from home, didn't she? Now, now, Doris, there are two sides to everything. You've got to admit that sometimes Jim made things very difficult for Frida. So let's be fair about it, eh? Dad, I'm sorry. But gee, I hate to see you so unhappy. <laughs> Just because you haven't as much money as when you married her. I don't see how some women can go along and expect... Hello, child. When did you get in? About a half an hour ago. I thought you had gone to the theater, dear. I am going, darling. I just dropped by to see how you were. Well, you seemed so nervous this afternoon. I, I was really worried. Oh, not interrupting, am I? No, dear, no. No, not at all. I was just shoving off anyway. I'm AWOL as it is. Good night, sweet. Good night, darling. Bye, Frida. Bye. How much longer do you think I can stand this? Oh, now, my dear. Well, she was talking about me when I came in. She's always talking about me, trying to turn you against me. Oh, no, no, please. She couldn't do that, even if she tried to. You're my wife, and I love you. Then why do you let her tell lies about me? Wicked lies. What did she say this time? Oh, now, Frida, please. Let's not argue about it. What did she say? Nothing. Except, uh... Except what? She thinks you are a little bit extravagant. Extravagant? When for the past year I've pinched and saved and done everything I could. Yes, yes, I know, my dear. I know we haven't as much money as we used to, but... Oh, if you'll just be a little patient. Oh, it isn't the money. It's... It's everything. I feel like a stranger in this house. Why, even the servants hate me. And your son, when he was here, did nothing but insult me. If I'd known it was going to be like this, I never would have married. Don't say that, Frida. When I think of the old days, how happy we were. It was lovely then. We were happy. Emil. Why can't we get enough money together to break away from all this forever? 
Just you and I alone. Don't, Frida. Don't. For days you've been talking that way. Always about getting money. Money. Hey, Mel. It's driving me mad. Mad, you hear? You know what you've done? Almost you made a murder out of me. Tonight I was going to kill a man. To get money for you. Must you kill him to get the money? Couldn't you take it while he's unconscious? So? All the time you knew? Yes, I knew. And you didn't try to stop me. You've been watching, listening, pressing me on. No, oh, Emil, darling. Don't touch me. Emil, please. Don't touch me, I tell you. That's him. Please go. Come in. Here, I've brought it. Come. All right. Yes, he's here. Hurry, darling. Yes, uh huh. All right. Dr. Bryant in? No. That is, yes, he is, but he's busy with a patient. Are you Mrs. Bryant? Yes. I'm Captain Riley. I'm sure you'll see me. He's expecting me. Oh, yes, Captain Riley. I'll tell him you're here. You are asleep. So deep, deep sleep. Emil. There's a policeman outside. He said you told him to come. Why? Oh, yes, Fried. I... Hello, Doctor. Oh, hello, Captain. Where's the Lieutenant? Am I late? No, no, everything was quite all right, so I told him to go. Uh, oh, Frida, this is Captain Riley. Captain, my wife. How do you do? This your patient, Doctor? Yes. Hmm, he looks like a sick man at that. Did he bring the money? Oh, yes, here it is. Uh, you will notice there are not new bills which could be traced. Hmm. Uh, I wish you to witness. There. Okay, now how do you bring this fellow to? Oh, but wait. Uh, first I must tell him to return the money. Well, first he's going to the station house. But, Captain, you're not going to arrest him. Why not? He's got a hundred thousand dollars in his pocket that belongs to somebody else. But, Captain, at the station, you at said... At the station, no crime had been committed. Now it's different. I'm an officer, and I've got to arrest this man. He stole the money, didn't he? Yes, but like a man in a dream, he didn't realize what he was doing. Well, the jury will take that into account. He'll get off light. Oh, well, Captain, it's a tragedy, and there's no need for it. He'll put this money back in the bank, and no crime is committed. How do I know he will? For the same reason that he brought it here. He's absolutely under my control. Captain, you have your duty. But you're also human. Have mercy on this unfortunate. If I could be sure that nothing would go wrong... Well, you'll go with him. You'll, you'll not let him out of your sight. 
Are you crazy? I can't do that. What would it make me? I understand, Captain. I'm only doing it for the sake of this innocent man. All right. Now listen. He never brought any money here. Do you understand? I haven't seen a thing. Captain, how can I thank you? Never mind that. Remember, you're responsible. You're putting me in a spot. See that it comes out OK. Thank you, Captain. Good night, Mrs. Brandt. Oh, uh, good night, Captain. Good night, Doctor. Good night. Oh, never mind. I'll find my way out. Good night. Good night, Captain. And many thanks. Where are you going? To the theater. After my promise to Captain Riley. Philip Ames, you will take this money back. You will return it to the bank where you got it. It is not yours, Philip Ames. You will take this money back. You will return it to the bank where you got it. This money belongs to the bank. It is not yours, Philip Ames. You will return it. This money is not yours. Do you hear me, Philip Ames? This money belongs to the bank. You will do exactly as I tell you. Return the money to the bank. Return the money to the bank. Do you hear me, Philip Ames? <laughs> What's the matter? What's happened? Oh, something horrible. My husband, come quick. Sure. Where? In there. Oh. Where's the light switch? Inside the door. Fuse blown. Oh. Here. Huh? Bo, hold it, will you? Oh, hurry. Yeah. Let me have it. There. Oh, all right. Come on. Oh! Gee, he's dead. Emil! Phew. Chloroform. Is he dead? Nah, he's all right. Oh, Just passed out. Help me get him up. Happening. What have you done to oh, him? Nothing, nothing. Help me get him upstairs. Yeah. Now there's the judge. Doctor, doctor. Bad I bad. Had you see? This thing they're going back. Yeah. 
got to go home for. Yeah, it's a murder and it's a honey. Hmm? Wait a minute now, look. Name's Philip Ames. Yeah, I'll phone you the rest later. Want to look around before the dicks must things up. Hmm? Yeah, they, they don't know what happened yet. Mm -mm. Keep a line open for the story. It ought to be good. Hold on there. Hold on. What's the idea? Why, I was just closing the window. Yeah? Show me where it came from. I believe this belongs to you. The struggle must have been over there. I wonder how that table got knocked over. Say, how'd you get those bruises? You were in this room when it all happened, weren't you? Weren't you? Why, certainly. I came in to say goodbye to my husband before leaving for the theater. Just as I reached the door, the light went out. And I heard a struggle going on over here where he was standing. It seemed to go on and on. And, and what were you doing? Knitting? Why didn't you scream for help? I, I was too frightened. Maybe you weren't frightened at all. Maybe you know who was doing it. No, no, it couldn't have been. Why not? Because he tried to choke me. Oh, until he tried to choke you, you thought it was Gilbert. That's what you call me out front. You want to tell me his other name and what he was doing here? What business is it of yours? None, but it may be the business of the police. Have you called them? Not yet. Yeah? 1114 River Drive. What? Hello. Hello. What's that number? 
1114 River Drive. Murder. Murder? Why, I've just come from there. Collins! Porter! Do you want us to telephone Miss Doris? Uh, Miss Doris? Yeah, the doctor's daughter. She lives at Craig University. Never mind. I'll get her. Two clubs. Let me see. Two hearts. Two spades. Three hearts. Three spades. Pass. Well, are you going to bid or not? Four spades. Hmm. You got your nerve. Well, what are you going to do? I'm Doris Brandt. Did you want to see me? You're... You're Doris Brandt? Say, I'm certainly glad of that. I I'm Dan McKee. Well, I'm glad to know you, Mr. McKee. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Brandt. I've been wondering what you'd be like, but gosh, I, I never thought that you'd turn out to be such a... Um, Mr. McKee, what is it you want to see me about? Oh, look, Miss Brandt, I'm a newspaper man, and this... Newspaper man? Yeah. Didn't you ever read the front page of the record? Well, that's me. I practically run that paper. I'm, I'm sure about... you understand my curiosity. Would you mind explaining why you came tonight? <laughs> Gee, you almost made me forget. It's about your father. There was a my murder... father? Yeah. There was a murder pulled off at his house tonight, and I... Murder? Steady now, steady. It's all right. It's all Who right. Who was it? One of your father's patients, a man by the name of Ames. Mm. Imagine me springing it like that. Of all the sap, somebody ought to take me and suck me. What about Father? Oh, he'll be all right. Just an overdose of chloroform. Chloroform? Now, your father's going to be absolutely all right. There's not a... Let's go to him at once. I've got a taxi outside. Come on. Come on, Charlie, let's go. Here he is, Captain. Hello? Riley. Yeah, send Burke over here right away, will you? Fingerprints. Yeah. Find anything, Frank? Oh. Do you know anybody by the name of Gilbert? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I know of Gilbert Reed. Who is he? Oh, he's sort of a friend of my stepmother. That's the guy. Where does he live? Just around the corner from us. The Terrain Apartments. I'll drop off there. I'd like to have a little chat with Mr. Reed. Which one? Right over there. Thanks, pal. Mr. Reed? Yes. Are you alone? Yes. I just left Mrs. Brandt. What do you mean? She sent you here? Mm -mm. Well, what do you want? I'm going to tell you something you already know. Uh, you can look surprised if you want to. Philip Ames was murdered at the doctor's house half an hour ago. Why tell me about it? Who are you, a cop? Nope, reporter and the first in the room after the murder, along with Mrs. Brandt. What's she tell you? Plenty. Haven't got a drink, have you? Yes. Thanks. Better pour yourself one, too. Thanks. Would you mind telling me what time you left the Brandt home tonight? Sure. I left Mrs. Brandt at the door a little after eight and came straight home. Hmm. Didn't go in, huh? No. Lucky break for you, wasn't it? Yes, darn lucky. Say, you haven't got a chaser to go with this, have you? Sure.
Oh, thanks. Well, here's a go. Good liquor. You know, there was a, a button found tonight in the room where Ames was murdered. Hmm. Mrs. Bryant gave it to me. She told you that was mine? Why do you think I'm here? But it, it couldn't be. I wasn't inside the room. You were outside the window. I got that on good authority. And the window was unlocked, and the button was found in the room. Wait a minute. Who found that button? Mrs. Brandt. Just as I thought. She says she picked it up. Oh, I saw her pick it up. But you didn't see her drop it. This whole thing is a plant. She must have got that button when we were at dinner. What makes you think so? Sure. Just as I thought, that button was cut off. By golly, you're right. It was cut off. What does that prove? That she killed him herself to get the money. Money? She didn't tell you that, did she? She didn't tell you that Ames had $100,000 in his pocket when he was killed. I'll say she didn't. She planned this whole thing herself to get the money and throw the blame on me. Yeah, you may be telling the truth, brother, but you're in a spot. Uh, what's Brant's phone number? Hudson, 7638. Hudson, 7638. What time did you leave? At 730, Your Honor. We then took a picture, but we couldn't stay to the end because my husband here, he got the bad stomach from eating sour braten with red cabbage. Four helping he eats. Three. Four. Three. Eric, when he comes to sour braten with red cabbage, you're nothing but a swine. And you know it. Here, here, here. Calm down, calm down. It, it was for your honor. And that is why we couldn't stay. Is that all you have to tell me? Yeah, your honor. That is Frank, all. Frank, take him out. Huh? Captain Riley there. Tell him it's a witness in the Brandt case. Wait a minute. No, no, quiet. You want to spill your story before she spills hers, don't you? You better. That's a good boy. Here. Something for you. Uh-oh. There, your button. Thanks. You're a white man. Oh, that's all. Hello, Captain Riley. This my key. Hey, look, I got a guy here who can do you some good. Fine, bring him right over. Uh, now, Mrs. Frank, let's go back. You say a man grabbed you in the dark? Yes. Nothing familiar about his figure? No, it, it, it was too dark to see. But I felt his hands when he grabbed me. He had gloves on. What kind? Rubber gloves? No, leather. They were very soft. Suede, I think. Would you mind telling me if your husband owns a pair of suede gloves? My husband? The lights went out and someone grabbed me from behind. I, I felt a cloth go over my face and smelled chloroform. I try to fight it off, and, well, that's the last I know. Is there any way you could identify this mysterious assailant? No. Was it a man or a woman? I should say it was a man by his strength. Doctor, from what I know of this case, I can only say that you are very unconvincing. But you don't think that I... But if I had meant to go through with the murder, I wouldn't have asked you to come here with me. Maybe not. And then again, maybe it was the smartest thing you could have done. Suppose that you came to me and told me about your plans, figuring that you'd use it for an alibi afterwards, just as you are using it now. Suppose you even went so far as to bring me up to the house to see that everything was all right. Suppose I nearly blocked your plans by starting to arrest Ames, and you got around that by appealing to my sympathy. And suppose the moment I left, you killed Ames, hid the money, and put yourself out with chloroform. Uh, by the way, Doctor, where do you keep your chloroform? 
Uh, my medicine cabinet in the laboratory. You mind showing me? Come on, Frank. Army prints yet, Frank? No, sir. Everything's blurred. How about the money? Not a sign of it. I keep chloroform in here. Wait a minute. Hey, Frank, have you tried this cabinet for prints? Yeah, nothing clear. All right. Right here on the second shelf. Why, it's gone. Sure it's gone. Show them where you found the bottle, Frank. Here's the bottle. We found it down there under the desk. Is this it? Yes. And there's where they found you lying, Doctor. Tell me, where were you when the lights went out? I was sitting here on the couch, just came in that door, crossed the room, and put the money in his pocket. Well, you put that money in his pocket before I left. Why'd you take it out again? I didn't. Well, who did? I can't tell you. Better get Mrs. Brandt, Frank. Oh, for heaven's sakes, why don't you say something? Just sitting there, sitting there. Mrs. Brandt, Captain wants to talk to you. Maybe you better come too, miss. Here she is, Captain. Now, Mrs. Brandt, there are a few little points that I'd like to have you clear up. What is it, Rankin? We found this stuck behind some drapes in Mrs. Brandt's bedroom. It's packed. Open it up. It's locked. Bust the lock. Here, try this. It might be simpler. Thanks. Hmm. Even your jewels, eh? Looks like you were going places. You packed this? Of course I did. I was worried about my husband. I was trying to get him to go away for a trip, and I thought if I had my things packed, it would be easier to persuade him to go with me. Mm hmm Did you expect to persuade your husband to go on a trip at that time of night? Well, I... Come now, Mrs. Brand. Why did you pack this suitcase? I'll tell you why. She was all ready to light out when she got her hands on that money. Cap. This is the guy I was telling you about. Been playing me for a sap, eh? Telling me we'd get the money and go away together. While all the time you were planning to throw the blame on me and keep the money yourself. No. Then why did you get me over here tonight? Oh, now we're getting somewhere. So you were here tonight. Yes. She phoned me to come on over, that the money was in the house. Yeah, go on. I was supposed to go around to the study window and wait. Which window? That one. She came in here and unlocked it. Then she started over there, and the lights went out. I heard a groan Why don't you do something? I thought she'd turned out the lights and was taking the money away from her husband. In fact, I still think so. You say my wife was going away with you? Yes. She's been fooling you for months, and me too. In all this time, you've been driving me to commit a murder. Easy, doctor. He has the right to feel the way he does, but you. I've tried to protect you. And he's the man who killed Philip Ames. He knew that money was in this room. He told you so. He said he was at that window, but he didn't stay there. He went through the garden, along the porch, in the door of the laboratory. Then he blew the lights, claw on my husband, and killed Ames. And because he wanted the money all for himself, he tried to kill me. Remember, I told you the man who grabbed me was wearing suede gloves? Yes. Well, look. What of it? Am I the only man in town wearing suede gloves? But the pair the murderer was wearing is right here. Hmm, they're inside out. Looks like he peeled them off in a hurry. That's right. Doctor, when you came back with me tonight from headquarters, you were wearing gloves. You put them over there with your hat and cane. They're gone. Those are my gloves. Yours? Let me see. Hey, leave things alone. Chief, this housekeeper out here is going nutty. Says she's got something important to tell you. Where is this honor? 
Robert, I have lied to you. It was only three helpings. Ah? Just now, my husband, he was fixing the fuse that was blown in the switchbox. I looked into the refrigerator. I found there were only two helpings left. Now, I know that receipt. It makes just exactly eight helpings. The doctor only had one. I had two. If there were two left, my husband could only have eaten three. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. But I wouldn't like to lie to your but honor. never mind that. Uh, tell me, where is this switch box located? Uh, uh, on the back porch, your honor. Would you say that between the time the lights went out and the time that you heard the struggle, a man could have come from the back porch to this room? Impossible. The lights weren't blown at the switch cap. They're blown over there at that lamp. Yeah, what makes you think so? You can see where the short circuit burned the cord. And here's the pin that blew it. See, that? see how the point's blackened? Yeah, where'd you find that? There on the floor after the murder. Yeah, well, you should have left it there. Uh-uh. See a pin and let it lay, you'll have bad luck to live long day. Not me. I come from a family of string savers and paper box putter awaiters. The lights were put out by someone who reached in through that door. The doctor could have reached it from there. Or maybe she was closer to her husband than she says. No, he might have come in another window. Now, hold on. We've had enough of that. You say that she did it. And she says you did it. The lieutenant thinks that maybe Dr. Brandt did it. Now, are we going to work this thing out just exactly as it happened and see what we can find? You say you were over there? Yes, outside the window. All right, take your place. Not outside, inside will do. You were there. Yes, right here. And I was out front. Quiet. You be Ames. Lie down, play dead. Sorry, pal. Now, everybody, show me what you did. Come on, doctor. Doctor, where were you? I was sitting here on the couch. I was saying over and over again, you will return the money. Just then, I came in the room, moved over, and unlocked that window. Then I started back along the wall. I put up the window from the outside, very slowly, like this. And just as I reached this point, the lights went out. I felt somebody grab me from behind. Frank, you play the murderer. Me? Sure, act it out. But I'm no actor, Cat. Oh, get going. Put your hand in that door and blow the light. Now come over and grab the doctor and put him out. Now you pick up the instrument. By the way, where was it, doctor? I left it here on the desk. Well, this'll do. Here. You take that and stab Ames. Go easy, Frank. This is my good suit. Now you take the money out of his pocket. Uh, then I got frightened and called out. And the murderer hears you and goes towards you. Go ahead, Frank. And I started forward. Go on, Frank. Grab her. He grabbed me by the arm and put his hand over my mouth. No, not like that. Don't you see? The bruises on her face are the other way around. What bruises? Where well, he grabbed her. It was his left hand. The thumbprints on the left side and the fingers on the right. Like that. Let me see. Sure enough, left hand. I didn't shoot. <clears throat> hey, wait a minute. Where'd you get those scratches? Well, I don't remember. They must have happened when I struggled with him. Come on, grab her with the right hand and put the left over her face. Now you got it. Then I struggled with him, pushed him back. He knocked that table over. Then I screamed and ran out the door. And all that time you were lying to me, scheming to run away with that man, planning to make me a murderer. Hello, Emil. <laughs> now I remember. Yes? Those scratches. Yes. When, when I pushed him away, I felt... Everybody stay where you are. Boys, watch those doors. Franken, Frank, give me a flashlight. Give it here. Where's Mrs. Brandt? 
Rita! He's killed her. Dr. Brandt, you're under arrest. He didn't do it! I tell you, he didn't do it! Ladies and gentlemen, the great trouble with murder stories on the screen is that the audience has no time to solve the mystery. When reading a book, it is possible to put it down at any point to think. In a play, there are intervals between the acts. But a film moves so fast that the audience doesn't have a chance to play detective. Sitting there in your seats, you have witnessed two murders. You have seen exactly how they were done and who were present. All the clues known to the police are known to you. We are trying a little experiment. We are going to give you one minute by that clock in which to guess who murdered Philip Ames and Mrs. Brandt. I tell you, my father couldn't have committed that murder. I was standing right beside him when the lights went out. He didn't move until after Frida screamed and fell. That's right, Your Honor. He didn't move. I was standing right on the other side. Oh, she was over by the door, Chief, right next to me. What difference does that make? The doctor didn't move. You heard Miss Brandt say so. Yes, I heard her say so, and I don't blame her. I'd stick up for my father, too, even if I knew he was guilty. Oh, but he isn't. Can't you see the... Listen, if my father committed these murders, then where's the money? You know he didn't leave the house, and yet you haven't been able to find a sign of it. We'll find it all right. When we do, we'll sense the case. But not against the doctor. How do you figure that out? Well, I'm the murderer, see? I've got the money, and I'm going to light out when Mrs. Brandt screams, and I find there's a woman in the room. I try to grab her, but she gets away. I realize she's gone to call help. I may get caught on the outside. I can't have the money found on me, so what do I do? I hide that money somewhere in the room and figure on slipping back later to get it. Anybody would have thought of that, even a dumb cop. You're going to get too fresh someday. Yeah. I apologize, but the rest of it makes sense, doesn't it? Yes, it then makes sense. why pick on the doctor? Anyone in that room tonight could have blown that fuse. We were all near light cords. You could have done it with a pin from your gardenia. And you with your stick pin. And you with that pen knife. No, it was the doctor. Nobody else had as good a motive as his. First, he killed Ames to get money for his wife. Then he found out she was running out on him with another man. But that's not why she was killed. No? She was killed because she was going to tell something that would give us a line on the murderer. Well, that's no reason why it couldn't have been the doctor. I thought so. What she felt was this. Oh, rats. You've got just as good a case against me. I was in the neighborhood at the time of the first murder. Mrs. Brandt scratched herself on these pins I have in my coat, and so I killed her to keep her quiet. Well, if you want me to lock you up, I will. Go ahead. It'll only be one more mistake. Oh, Captain, the newspaper boys want to know when you'll be ready to give them a statement. In five minutes. Better take the doctor and book him, Frank. No, no. It'll be all right, my dear. Where is it that you wish me to go, sir? This way. Oh, doctor. Doctor. Uh, 
I'm sorry, Miss Brandt. Will you see that she gets back to the college? As a favor to you? Yeah, it'll keep you out of my hair. I can't go back there now. Look, honey, you've got to get a grip on yourself. Stop worrying. I'm not going to let anything happen to your father. What more could happen to him? Well, they could hang him. Oh. Go ahead. Stop me. My father didn't kill that man. He didn't kill Frida. I know it. You know it, too. Don't you? Sure I know it, because you say so. Not a very good reason, is it? It's good enough for me. But of course, we gotta do more than know it. Look, here's what I had in mind. I wanna get back in that room, and the cop on guard will never let me in. But he's gotta let you in. You live there. What do you say? All right. Tell the driver. I did. That cigar would taste better if you had a little pie first. What kind of pie? Coconut custard pie. Okay. I knew I could figure on that cop's appetite. We have to work fast. Yeah. We've just got to find that money. You think it's still here? Well, my hunch is right, it must be. Whoever did it, Mrs. Brandt upset his plans. Look, suppose I'm the murderer and you're Mrs. Brandt. You just come in that door. Over here? Yeah. I put out the lights over there. Cross over, jump on your father, and knock him out. Then I kill Ames and take the money out of his pocket. That's where she screamed. That's a surprise to me. I start after you. I try to get out. I grab you and put my hand over your mouth. <laughs> oh. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I... Oh, I'm... I'm sorry, I... She, she, say, wait a minute. Your stepmother's lips were smeared, too. So the murderer's hand must look something like mine does. Yes, but he wore gloves. Sure. Now, if there's no rouge on your father's gloves, that'll be great. Come on. Uh -uh. Uh-oh. Not so hot. That shows that the murderer wore these gloves all right. But it doesn't prove that your father wore them when the murder happened. Come on. Ten chances to one, we'll find Lip Rouge near where the money's hidden. Come on. Come on, snap out of it. Help me. Glasses are turned over. Wait a minute. Huh? I've got it. Huh? Stuck to the back of the door. When you push it back, it goes into that groove at the side. Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> Don't touch it. What are you going to do? Call the police. coming. Quick, the closet. Yeah.
So, it was you. Get him up. Sit down. Get me Maine, two, four hundred. Brant did it all right. You can tell your papers the case is in the bag. We cleaned it up in two hours. Say, Captain, Key is on the wire. He's out the Brant house. Says he got the murder. He's crazy. And the money. What? Mrs. Riley, what did you say? I'll be right out. Come on, Frank. What is it, Cap? There. Hold the presses, Joe. I've got a wow. Exclusive. Caught the Brant murderer. Yeah, I got him coming back for the money. I'll phone particulars in ten minutes. Yeah. Working up a little nonchalance? You know, you're making a fool of yourself. Mind telling me how? Stay right where you are. Put up your hands. None of that, sister. Come on, you. I'm not kidding. Say, what is this? Never mind what it is. Keep your hands up. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Look what he's doing. Hey, wait a minute. Give me a break, will you? How'd you know where the money was? I know a lot of things, brother. Get over there. Hey! You know, it'd be smarter to go after that fellow with the money. All right, but you're the bird in hand. We've got you. There's nothing that the birds are going to get. Huh? Oh. It's the police. Yeah. Say, what's going on? Well, we've got the murder, but we lost the money. What? Sure, just as I nabbed him, someone comes in, puts a gun on us, and gets away with the money. Why didn't you stop him, you dope? I thought I mentioned he had a gun. But listen, he only got a minute start on you. It went that way. He's a young fellow in a light brown suit and a gray hat. Where were you, asleep? Well, uh, I was just... See if you can get him, Frank. Okay, come on, Burns. How do you know he got the money? Where was it? In that corner cupboard. Oh. What are you doing here? There's your murderer. He walked right into my hands. Yeah, sure I did, but that doesn't prove I killed anybody. Then how'd you happen to come back for the money? How'd you happen to come back? Well, and how about that other fellow? If you want to know, tonight in your office, when you said the money must be in this room, I got to thinking. When I was standing outside that window, I heard the tambour doors in that cupboard clicking. I figured the money must be in there, so I came back. You took a big chance, didn't you? Not so big. You see, I can always prove I didn't do the murder. Yeah? How? Look. Think those can make a bruise? Thumb and forefinger, okay. The rest are artificial. Blown off in the war. I'm pretty clever at conce... I'm pretty clever at concealing it, but I couldn't struggle with a man the size of Dr. Brandt. And if you want more proof, get me those gloves. My hands are so small, I couldn't turn them wrong side out if I tried. It is the doctor after all. Hello. Yeah, he's here. What'd he tell you? Yeah, well, you can kill that story. And listen, Murphy, I wish you'd keep your dumb reporters in their cages. That goes double for McKee. If I see him around the place again, I'll exterminate him. You heard what I said, McKee, and I'll beat it back to your nursery. 
Picked him up at the corner, Cap. The guy was just hanging around. He wasn't even trying to get away. Did you get the money? Yeah. Let me have it. What's your name? What difference does it make? You're going to get that way, are you? We'll have to talk to you at the station house. Take him along, Frank. Go ahead. He hasn't done anything. I know he hasn't. No, then what's he doing in this house? He has a right to be here. He's... he's my brother. So that's why he kissed you? Yes. Jim, why did you take that money? I don't know. It was crazy, I guess. I thought it would help Dad. I figured if they couldn't find the money, they wouldn't think he did it. He did it all right, and I guess you know something about it, too. I know my father didn't kill that man. What makes you think so? Because I was standing right at that door when the murder happened. Well, you were at the door, huh? Sounds kind of phony to me, hanging around like that. Nothing phony about it. I saw my father on the street, saw something was wrong, and did so... Did you speak to him? No. I was in a spot. I hadn't seen my dad for two years. Had a misunderstanding. So I thought I'd just You'll stick around and... You'll have to do better than that, boy. Take him away, Frank. No! Come on. Ouch! Wait a minute. Now I know what it was Frida was going to say. Now, don't anybody put out the lights. Go on. She was going to tell us what she felt when she pushed the murderer away. And that's what she felt. When she struggled with him, my his coat fell back and, and she scratched her wrist on his badge, just like I did. Say, what do you mean? Ah, oh, but it couldn't have been. The scratches were on her left wrist and they're on your right. Sure. Yeah. But that isn't the badge. How about the one with the three little diamonds in it? You mean this one? Yeah. Only tonight, when the doctor came to your office, you were wearing it on the right side of your vest. Sure, I remember. We were playing cards. And speaking of cards, this was on the floor over there. It's out of the deck you two used at the office. Which one of you lost it? Come on, Frank, let me see your six cards. One, two, three, four, five. Huh? Yeah. How about yours, Riley? How about the rest of the deck that you put in your pocket? Forty cards. You want to count them? Now, let me see your six. What's the matter, afraid? No. I probably dropped it when I was here before Ames was murdered. Expect me to believe that? The jury would. Then how do you explain this? Lip rouge. And this glove the murderer was wearing, there's lip rouge on it, too. Just for fun, try it on, will you, Frank? He couldn't get into him with grease, fingers, and a shoehorn. You could, but your hands are bigger than the doctor's. You had to turn them wrong side out to get them off. And what's more, here's where you blew out the lights before you killed Mrs. Brandt. And a jury would believe that. Don't do that, Frank. Everybody, stay right where you are. Wait a minute. Come on, Riley. Better be a good boy. Keep away from that door, Frank. Get down. Yeah. Got him. No kidding this time. Believe it or not, it was Riley. I guess the sight of all that dough must have sent him off his nut. Wait a minute. Riley, you saved me a disagreeable job. Hey, Bill. 
Make that the late Captain Riley. <laughs> what a story. What a story. Captain of Detective Slays 2 for $100,000. Boy, it's a wow. <laughs> That's the trouble with you newspaper guys. You take a story like this and you smear it all over the front page. But how about the hundreds of cops that get killed in the line of duty? What do you do for them? I'll tell you, nothing. Sorry, Frank. Yeah, I know. But there's one thing you don't know, Frank. There's one thing that still bothers me. But there's still one thing I can't figure out. I got one clue left over. Pardon me. My error. <laughs> now, everything's in its place. What do you think? Mm -hmm. How can I ever thank you, young man? Only one way. By becoming the grandfather of my children. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like. Come on, Jim. <laughs> 